Hi, my name is Andy. I'm going to be going over some maintenance on a pair of these orange vice uh, screw carriers here in front of you, as you can see. Uh, before I get started, I should mention that these are the orange generation 2 jaws, which have uh, a little bit of a different design compared to the original ones. The way you can tell the difference is that the screw carriers located here and here are virtually the same length on the generation 2, which is what you see. The original generation 1 had a longer uh, rear jaw and then the front jaw was short and it had a little system of thrust bearings that held onto the screw uh, But I don't have that in front of me. I can't help you with that uh, You may want to contact orange and see if they have any instructions on this assembly uh, But I'm going to be going over the generation 2 disassembly today and show you how easy they are to clean In order to take everything apart uh, I'm going to wear gloves because there's going to be a lot of dirt and grease all throughout these things uh, and if you choose to use an air hose, then I highly recommend using uh, eye protection to prevent blowing stuff in your face. Uh, the tools you're going to need is a set of Allen keys, uh, specifically a one quarter and a five thirty seconds, uh, and some white, uh, white lithium grease or other lithium based grease in order to lubricate the O-rings and the screw. Uh, I should mention before I go on, the reason that I decided to do maintenance on these parts today is because uh, I had an O-ring get shredded, uh, the O-ring that's located right here around the front of the jaw uh, because I traveled the screw too far and when you do that the o-ring starts to get cut by the threads so I found this in the bottom of the machine and said oh there's an o-ring I'm going to take these things apart and I'm going to replace it with these here as we get to it so let's get started I have to break all these screws apart and release the uh, cover plates before I do anything else As I may or may not have mentioned, ball rounded Allen key is going to make this uh, quite a bit easier because you can unscrew it just like that. This cover plate is now free and you can slide it off. I'm going to set it here because it's dirty. Flip the assembly around and located on the back side you have the uh, brake assembly and that has to be taken off also. This part probably will have some uh, chips and other debris attached to it uh, because it likes to accumulate that stuff just during regular machining. Some chips there. There's a uh, big die spring under here with a bunch of chips all over it. And of course chips trapped in there. So as you go through everything will have to be cleaned. I'm going to remove this final plate. This plate will slide right off. All right, now with all the cover plates removed, as you can see, these two in the middle are still trapped, but they're loose. Uh, you have to unscrew each of the jaw carriers. This rear jaw, which is the one I'm doing right now, is uh, right-hand threaded, so you know how to get that off. However, the other jaw, the front jaw, is left-hand threaded, so that one will be in reverse. You can see all the all the old grease that's trapped on the edge of the screw, plus this old O-ring here, which has probably been seen better days. I'm gonna throw that out. Cover plates slide right off. Like that. Obviously you can see uh, three of these are the same, only this rear one is different, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Now I'm going to remove the final jaw carrier, screwed it a little bit so I can get the shredded o-ring off of here. That's the one that got destroyed as I over-traveled the vise. Throw that out. All right, there's all the components all laid out. Don't worry about getting the front and rear jaws mixed up because you can easily tell which one is the rear jaw because it has the large half 13 screw on the back and that offset quarter 20 screw. The other one does not, it has just the pair. So this is the rear, this is the front. 
you will probably figure it out, don't worry about it. In order to clean these components, you'll have to use uh, some shop rags or towels or napkins or whatever you have to get rid of all the old grease. And then after that, if you have a parts washer or degreaser or any tank like that, uh, this would be a perfect time to use it. But I should point out that when you re go to regrease the components once they're all cleaned, uh, you don't want to have any, any solvents attached to them already because the solvents is going to interact with the grease and probably remove uh, the lubricating properties. So even after you use a degreaser, it's good to clean off the parts afterward. Maybe dip them in a solution to remove it. The hardest part to clean is going to be the inside. But as you can see, it's very dirty. Okay, I've cleaned off most of the dirt and grease from the two jaw carriers. Now I'm going to do the brake, which has a half 13 screw and a large spring, and then the brake itself. As I mentioned earlier, there's probably going to be some chips on here, so you could definitely blow them off with compressed air. Just be careful where you're blowing it. The final component to clean are the cover plates. Forgot to mention, have to clean this. This is the actual final component. I still have an o-ring attached, so I'm going to slide that off and replace it with new ones. All right, everything is cleaned and ready to go. I just now have to reassemble. First step I'm going to follow is take this screw shaft and reinstall the cover plates that will be located in the middle of the two jaws. That would be this one and this one. Keep in mind that these heads are countersunk, so they have to face away from each other. Or I guess I should say the screw heads have to face each other. The plates have to face away from each other. So when you slide them on, you'll actually be able to insert the screws in the proper directions like that, facing away from each other. Hard to see. Once that's done, take your o-rings. In this case I'm using new o-rings. By the way, these are size 212 o-rings, uh, which is slightly smaller than the original orange vise, which used a 213. Slide one over the front and one over the back. So you should see something like that. Now it's time to re-grease. So I'm going to take a generous amount of white lithium and what I'm going to do is I put it on both the female threads and I put it on the male threads. This way I figure there's absolutely plenty enough grease to go around and make it easier to clean next time. So just grease the carriers, now I'm going to grease the screw itself all the way around and again all the way around. Hopefully that's all the grease you need. Now the reassembly process for the two jaw carriers has a trick to it because one of them is, I should point it this way, this one is right hand threaded and this one is left hand threaded and when you reassemble them they have to be synchronized so that they uh, work together. If not, then you end up reducing your amount of jaw travel. So step one is take the rear jaw, again that's the one with the large half 13 screw in the back, and re-thread it into the shaft, or thread the shaft into the jaw, I should say. And I'm going to thread it in to the point where the threads just disappear underneath the other threads like that. Now take the front jaw and slide it over and thread it in the opposite direction. It 
it's important that you not move the screw in relation to the rear jaw because right now it's set at its at its maximum travel. The front jaw, screw that in again until the threads just disappear and then it will be at its maximum travel. So, so right now if you set these down on the table and twist the knob you'll have both simultaneously coming together at the exact same rate. This is why I said you have to synchronize them to get them right. So now that you have the jaws correctly synchronized together, don't move one of them without moving the other one. So if you pick it up and flip it around, make sure that both flip over at the exact same rate. What you don't want to do is start turning this one and leave this one alone because then they'll become desynchronized and again you'll have reduced jaw travel. So I'm going to gently put these down. Alright, so in order to install the cover plates, you have to get a little bit of space located under here for the O-rings to sit. So I'm going to flip this around so it faces me and then manually actuate it slightly. Now you can reinstall the cover plates on the inside just by sliding the O-rings down. and use the 532nd Allen key to uh, replace both screws on either side. I'm snugging down the socket head screws just hand tight. There's no reason to over tighten these because the O-ring should do its job of sealing the screw. Uh, so the amount of force you apply on this thing shouldn't make any difference unless you over travel the screw. So now I have the two inner plates uh, assembled. You can now do the outer plate. Obviously you have to leave this gap right here for the brake screw which installs just like this. The amount of force you put on the brake will limit the amount of travel you have for that rear jaw. So I like to install it to the point where that uh, cap screw is just barely sticking out. And you can go further if you want more, but like I said, it will restrict how much braking you have. Now on the front side of the screw, there's a third O-ring located right there. And then the final cover plate will install around the outside. And after that, you will be done. All right, I have both these jaw carriers fully assembled and ready to go. So I'm going to get back to work. Uh, hopefully, you found this video useful. Uh, thanks for watching.